Hey guys, we're going to talk about weather and climate. Weather is the day-to-day -day conditions on the Earth's atmosphere or of the Earth's Weather is the day-to-day -day conditions of Earth's atmosphere. So if you're talking to a friend and you say to them, hey, what's the weather going to be like at the Friday night game? You're talking about the conditions at the game at one location at one time. We're pretty familiar with what weather is. If, if we talk about good weather, we're talking about sunshine, uh, fair temperatures, maybe upper 70s, low 80s. Uh, we're talking about bad weather, we're talking about rain, cold, snow. Climate is a little bit different than weather, and a lot of times people will get these two mixed up. Weather is at one location at one time. It's a single day. But a climate refers to the average conditions over long periods of time. And it is defined by year-to-year -year patterns that we see in temperature and precipitation. Microclimates are variations in a climate based on some local variable. One of the ones that we talk about most with microclimates is south versus north facing slopes. In the northern hemisphere, the sun will always be in our southern sky which means if you're a south-facing slope, you constantly have the sun on you. And if you're a north-facing slope, you don't have the sun on you. This is a picture of what that looks like. The slope on the right is a south-facing slope. You'll notice that it's all rock, and the reason is because where it's at, it gets too much sunshine and ends up being far too hot. The slope on the left, that slope is a north-facing slope. It's a little bit cooler, and so you'll notice here that you see some mosses growing on these rocks. That's not possible on this particular slope because the moss can't handle that extra temperature, that high heat. And so this is a microclimate. Even though they're in the same location, small variations can change what that climate looks like. Again, a climate is that average condition over long periods of time that's determined by these patterns that we see. If we talk about Indiana's climate, we have a very temperate climate. In our summers, we're warm nice and comfortable and our winters were typically very cold and we have many days that are left below freezing and a lot of snow precipitation. Global climate is shaped by many factors including but not limited to solar energy, latitude and transport of heat by winds and ocean currents. Solar energy is very important because if it wasn't for the sun constantly giving us energy and helping to keep our planet warm, our planet would be cold. We rely on the greenhouse effect and that solar energy to keep us warm. The farther up you go in latitude, however, it changes the effect of the solar energy. What do I mean by latitude? Remember, latitude is measuring your distance from the equator. So here around the equator, be it zero degrees latitude, where we're at, we're roughly 40 degrees latitude. So the higher latitude you have, the less direct sunlight you'll get. And then, of course, transport of heat by winds and ocean is very important. You'll notice here that this particular picture has the ocean colored. This is very warm ocean water, and here is very cool ocean water. That transport of energy by ocean water and wind accounts for a lot of the weather that we get, and it definitely accounts for climate. I mentioned the greenhouse effect, and it's quite simple. The greenhouse effect is when sunlight enters the Earth's atmosphere and gets trapped. Now, normally, if sunlight were to hit and, and we didn't have greenhouse gases, it would hit the Earth and simply reflect out as light. Some of that energy, however, gets absorbed by the Earth's surface and will heat up. This is like the idea if you take out a black blanket on a nice sunny day and put the black blanket on the ground, the black blanket will be warmer than a white sheet that was there. What happens is that this light gets radiated back out and that the greenhouse gases will cause some of that energy to stay trapped. Literally, we use the analogy of a greenhouse because a greenhouse does this. Sunlight comes in, it warms it up, and it traps that heat energy. If it wasn't for the greenhouse effect, our temperature would be significantly lower. These greenhouse gases are like a barrier, almost like a sheet of glass, although they're just gases. What are we talking about? Water vapor, methane, and carbon dioxide are very common greenhouse gases. Again, without the greenhouse effect, without these gases that absorb the energy and reflect it back to the Earth, then our Earth would be about 30 degrees Celsius cooler than it is today, which means that the greenhouse effect is fairly important that it happens. And later on, when we talk about global climate change, we'll talk about some of the negative effects of rampant greenhouse effect. Of course, latitude is very important, and the higher your latitude, the less direct your sunlight. Take a look at this picture here. It does a pretty good job of illustrating this. The most direct sunlight is measured with the same amount of light 
notice that this, this particular band is the same height. That's because it's the same amount of light. But if you look at the area it's affecting, when you're talking about the tropical climates, those that are between zero and 23 and a half degrees latitude, they get the most direct sunlight because that sunlight is not stretched out over as much of an area. But if you look up here in the temperate area, look at the extra space that that sunlight is stretched out on. The higher your latitude because of the curvature of this earth and the tilt of our axis, then what ends up happening is you get less direct sunlight. The same amount of sunlight is spread out over more of an area. And what that does is it keeps us cooler. Heat transport, again, happens in two main ways, with wind and with water. But the heat transport of wind is, but the heat transport with wind is very important to us. If we look here, this particular picture shows a lot of things happening. But let's break it down. First and foremost, we have wind directions here. Um, these directions are determined by something called the Coriolis effect that we might talk about later. But basically, when wind moves in a certain direction, because of the Earth spinning, it ends up changing direction. For instance, you notice that these westerlies are coming out of the west and are pushing east. And that these northeast trade winds are coming out of the northeast and pushing towards the west. These would have been winds that people from Europe would have tried to catch to get to the New World when they were sailing on ships, and the westerlies would be what they would use to come back to Europe. All of these are caused because of convection currents. You see these currents right here. You'll notice that the convection current has a spot of heating. That spot of heating is right here. The heat that's going on there is causing the air to warm up, and warm air is less dense than cold air. So because it's less dense, it ends up rising. And as it rises, it will go up, up, up in the atmosphere until eventually it cools down because at that level, the atmosphere, it's, it's a little bit farther from the Earth, and so it loses some temperature. But it can't fall back down because there's air still flying upwards from being heated. So what it ends up doing is it ends up moving in this direction. And this causes a current. This causes a current that will continue as the air cools and sinks. And again, it hits this point, but it can't readily continue to go down because there's the earth there. So it will split off in this direction, and it will also split off in that direction, thus giving rise to both wind currents. These large convection currents that happen in the atmosphere are very important to our climate. You will notice that in our area, we get most of our weather systems from our west. And that's because we're in the presence of the westerlies. It's blowing in weather systems that have rain, snow, sleet, hail, or good weather. This is a zoomed in picture of that convection current. Again, here is where the heating's happening. You have a large amount of solar energy hitting that spot. As that happens, the air goes up. Again, remember that warm air is less dense than cooler air, but eventually it reaches a high point in the atmosphere where it cools off, and when it does cool off, it then starts to move because it's got all this stuff still coming up. It's got to go somewhere because, again, this air is constantly going up because it's constantly being heated, so it can't fall back down. That convection current continues as this air cools and falls, and it will go one of two directions. It will go this direction or... It will go back that direction. Heat transport in the ocean is a little bit different. And this picture is quite complicated, but I want you to focus on a couple key things. First off, cold surface currents are highlighted in a small blue arrow. And so you can see these cold surface currents up here. You won't find very many of them in the equatorial regions where the equator is at. Most of those are warm surface currents. And that should make sense because in the equator, they get the most direct sunlight. So that warm current will move warm water in different directions. But I want to highlight for you Europe. Europe is, if you'll notice, mostly in a higher latitude than we are. Again, here is our location. And so if you're looking at latitude, Europe should be a lot, a lot colder than us. But one of the things that settlers discovered when they came to the New World was that we had very harsh winters. But if you notice what we're lacking, Europe is a peninsula completely surrounded by water and they're getting a constant supply of warm water from the Caribbean. This warm water makes it seem like they're in a bath or a hot tub. If you've ever spent, been out in a hot tub on a really cool winter night, inside the hot tub you're fine, but as soon as you get out of the hot tub, it's really cold because you're out of that warm water that helps regulate your temperatures. The deep ocean temperatures that they have are cool water dropping and returning 
to the equatorial regions. These have to be deep because if they weren't deep, then sunlight would help warm them up. This transfer of ocean currents affects the temperatures in a lot of different regions, and it becomes very pivotal on climates. For us, it's menial because of our location in North America. However, we still get all of our hurricanes through this. Most of the time when you have a hurricane start, it will start off the coast of Africa, and it will move this direction. At this point, it will make a decision. Either it's going to go inland or it's going to work its way up the coast. Almost all of our hurricanes are fueled by this energy from warm water.